What's up, you guys? Welcome back to my pod, where I'm pushing positivity, purpose, and peace to all student athletes to help y'all adapt, adjust, and win. Today, I'm with my my brother, literally, fam, Tibu. Nobody knows his last name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I really still don't. Like, I see it. I don't know how to pronounce it, though. It's good, though. It's good. He's still not going to tell anybody. But I have him on the pod today. He was standout athlete played football in high school and JUCO, and we're just gonna get his insight on his experience today. Tibu, how you feeling, bro? Feeling he was good. a little nervous off yeah, camera. this is my first time ever being recorded for anything. I try my best to stay out of, you know, the limelight, so it's a little bit outside my comfort zone, but I'm, I'm doing good. Okay. I think I'm doing good. Yes, all right. Well, can you just kind of give a summary of your student athlete background like when you started getting into sports how you started you know paying attention to football loving that and your journey um so i wanted to play sports for like a super long time but because like the way my family is situated and we have so many kids i had to kind of abstain from that and kind of just be the big brother to all of my siblings and watch them and whatnot and then i got the opportunity and I was a freshman to start, and that was my first year. So I played football, and I didn't play my sophomore year. Then I played my junior year, and I met this person named Cook. And I was playing offensive line, and defense, they didn't really know what to put me because they really didn't know where I was at athletically. And he right. showed me the ropes and mm -hmm. saw that I was an athlete. I was way bigger and stronger than most of the people in my class, and he seen that I had some type of potential. Um, then I just started going off, like in practice and whatnot, and senior year hit, and then I started a couple games. I played like some end, some defensive tackle, and then after that, I wrestled, and then I ended up taking eighth in state, and then I did mm -hmm. a little bit of track, mm -hmm. and then I went to college as a civilian, and that kind of <laughs> threw me off. Like, yeah. I just got a taste of what it was like to be an athlete, you know? So, right. Like, Mm -hmm. I can't be a regular person after this. Like I just, I just started figuring it out, you mm -hmm. know, and everything got taken away. So then that was kind of how I got my start and what kind of spurred me to become a, or pursue college football. Right. And where did you play? Uh, I only played at Grossmont, and then I went to Blake Where's College. That? That's in San Diego. Mm -hmm. It's a JUCO in uh, San Diego. And then I went and tried out for Blinn. It's a junior college in uh, Brandon, Texas. It's where Cam Newton went uh, before he transferred to Auburn. Mm. That's dope. Mm -hmm. That's dope. Now, I'm your friend, so I know like all of the things you had to go through. Um, kind of doing it by yourself, right? Because your parents don't really know sports like yeah. that. Um, what, what type of mindset do you have to have pursuing this dream going the JUCO route? Because some could argue like it's harder than D1 in some aspects because yeah. your basic needs aren't being met on top of having to perform against people who are good. Like yeah. JUCO is not, you know, a walk in the park. Like there's boys there, you know? Yeah. So what what mentality do you feel like you have to have going into that space? Um, one of the biggest things you gotta be like a self-starter and like self-sufficient. Like when you're at a JUCO, you don't have really like trainers like that or right. like big facilities Facts. or you know what I mean any of the things that you get from going to a you know like a big time school where mm -hmm. money is being thrown just wantonly at the sports not wantonly kind of wantonly especially you know? now yeah. with NIL yeah, yeah. you know yeah. what I mean like there's just a lot of money when you're going to a division one school especially right. like a uh you say like mid-major but like an FBS school or something oh like, like that. ACC yeah SEC. you yeah. know what I mean mm -hmm. But then when you're going to a JUCO, like, we don't have nothing. Like, we didn't have dorms where at my college, so you have to figure out housing on yourself. Mm -hmm. We didn't have really, like, scholarships like that. Uh, so you have to figure out tuition on yourself. If you're out of state, tuition was higher. Right. You have to get a job, classes, all of that. There's no, like, real counseling or right. the physical, uh, the trainers weren't the same quality. So everything you're just figuring out on your own. You know what I mean? And it's only two years, so you don't have a really long period of time to figure it out. And there's always going to be a rotation of people. So if you don't have, you know, right. the right mindset of, like, you know, perseverance and got to be tougher than the times and 
have a real strong desire to go to the next level and to do what it takes to go to the next level, like you're kind of just drowned. Facts. Facts, yeah. That makes sense. I think, like you said, having a vision is the common thing I hear with JUCO athletes. Like, you have to be on your grind. Like, I'm trying to get out in yeah. a year first and yeah. then in two years. Yeah. Because, yeah, it's not easy. And you're doing schoolwork and, like, having a job. Did you have a job? Yeah. You had a job? Yeah, it took me like three months to get a job. I had to work, go to school, pay rent, football. I had to juggle all of that, time management. Like, I had to be an adult. A all by being a kid, athlete. right, yeah. right. You're like 18, 21 yeah. years old. Paying rent, I'm in college. Right. I was a first generation college person. Mm. So it was just, it was a lot that you have to juggle. Facts. And you don't have anyone who's gonna want it enough to push you where you need to, where you need to go. Like, you mm. just can't expect that, so. Mm. You just got to go and figure it out. How was it like with your teammates? Because you said you're rotating teammates all the time. Yeah. Um, you develop like really strong bonds with your teammates because your guys are you guys are all going through some stuff. Mm. You know what I mean? Like me and my roommates, like we always barely had just enough money to pay rent. You know what I mean? We were all going through similar struggles. We all had to find jobs. Like no one really over there was affluent or came from you know, strong foundations or, you know, mm -hmm. we had like code athletes, but there right. was outside of that, you didn't have any of the other stuff that typically is required to go a traditional route. Right. You know what I mean? So right. Everyone, yeah, it could have been grades, bad yeah. attitude, yeah, lack opportunity, facts, yeah. facts. You know what I mean? So, and everyone's looking for a second chance, you know, mm. what I mean? a second opportunity to show that they have what it takes to get to the next level, you know right. what I mean? Right, right. So, for you, what would you say you would have done differently? Because you didn't get to go to the next level. Mm, if I could redo it, I probably, there's like two things. Like mm -hmm. one, uh, I was recommended, I, someone told me I should have went to Eastern. And I, mm. and I know like enough people to where I could have yeah. like kind of worked my way through that, walked on, you know what yeah. I mean? Like I, and just figure that out. Right. So that's one path. But if I were to do the JUCO path again, I probably would have went to like a Grossmont or some other JUCO in uh, the California area. And I would have stayed there for the two years. And I would have went there immediately after uh, college. Like, right. Oh, right. Because you took a year off. Yeah. So right. well, I went to Central first. Right. Because like I didn't know what I wanted. Right. You know what I mean? So I would have figured out what I wanted. Mm. And then I would have taken the steps. So the first step would have been one of my friends went to this college called Siskiyou. If I would have went with him, we both probably would have been finishing, uh, you know, like our last year in college playing football together, like either this year or last year, depending on how our eligibility worked out. Mm. Um, that's the biggest thing, just right. making the commitment from the jump. Facts. You know what I mean? And just making sure I was prepared and maybe saving a little bit more money. Like it's do, you, do you feel like you did the right research? Because, I mean, with any school you cho like choose, I feel it's so important to do your research and know what you're getting into. Do you feel like if you would have done that, maybe you could have chose a school that maybe yeah. suited you better? You know, because sometimes we go to schools and it doesn't suit our game or yeah. you know where we're trying to go. Yeah. Well, I was in a weird position because I didn't have any of my film from high school because I never mm. made like a highlight tape or anything. So that's that part of knowing what you want. Like, I I was going through football with no clear end goal, you know what I mean, mm. or just sports in general. Right. And I didn't realize that, that that was a possibility for me until I was ending my high school career. Right. You know? Right. So, if I could restart, I don't know if I would be, if I would have that knowledge, but let's say I did have that knowledge, mm -hmm. yeah, I would have made you know, different school shifts. I would have made sure to make a highlight tape and everything like that. Right. I might have even decided to wrestle in college because I was super right. talented at that. Right. So it was just, if I were to make a change, is give myself the knowledge that I have now yes. so then I can make the moves that I need to move to, to prepare myself yes. to pivot and make my next move my best move. Yeah, no, that's good. That's really good. I think that when you kind of grow up in a sports environment, say like maybe your family, yeah or you have a lot of friends doing the same thing, yeah. you know those little things. Yeah. You just think they're common sense, but like if you're someone and you're just trying to pursue this dream, you may think, oh, like this is all it takes. Like yeah. I just got to show up, but 
doing the prep of having a highlight tape, like I feel like someone just made me one just yeah. off the dribble because I play yeah. AAU or something, you know? Yeah. So that makes sense. Um, and also I feel like COVID was a huge factor for why you kind of like stopped. Oh, for sure. You know? Yeah. Um, that that affected so many athletes, like high school athletes, because seniors like myself were given a second year or an additional year, so it kind of like backed up the scholarships. How did that affect how you like sought after your dream of playing football? Like, how was that for you mentally, kind of navigating, like, what am I gonna do? Like, there's no practice, there's, you know, yeah, like, yeah. and kind of being like, well, I guess it's over. Yeah. Um, to answer that, I gotta give, like, some type of, like, context. Yeah, go ahead. So, at, when I first, so starting my first day at Grossmont, I get there, I fly there, I call one of my teammates, he's about to show up in about, like, two hours, and then we slowly start trickling down uh, into the airport. Most of us are here, and then we get picked up by the defensive coordinator at our school. Mm -hmm. Takes us to lunch. So I'm thinking, like, this is like, oh, this is serious. Right, you know right, I mean? right. Like, he's taking us out to dinner. We're eating this Chinese food, blah, 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 blah. He gives us a rundown of, a pro of the program, what type of defense we're running, where our ideal roles are and everything like that. So starts off super strong. Right. And then the way we have it situated is... I got an apartment in my name because I had been working a little bit before that, so I was the only person who was established enough to be able to get an apartment, and then everyone was gonna be paying me rent to get the apartment. And rent was first, the first rent or whatever the deposit was, whatever you need to get into the apartment was right. due the next day. Right. So then everyone ends up, we get a hotel, we were gonna sleep there for the night, and the plan was to go to the apartment the next day and then pay off, pay whatever we need to pay and move in. So then we have this roommate who Bro, comes you're in, telling yeah, the yeah, roommate yeah, yeah, story. Yeah, because that's, like, stuff like that's, like, super important. Like, can you just right. face this weird adversity? Like, right. not normal, like, work hard, grind. It's, like, it's, like, BS. Like, you know yes, what I mean? Yes, yes. So he comes. We're in the hotel. I go to sleep. I wake up. He's not there. We're all looking for him. They're like, hey, he probably went to go get his physical or something like that. <laughs> so then we don't have a car. So we're, I'm Ubering everyone here because I also have like this crazy discount program with Uber or Lyft where I'm, I can move around San Diego anywhere for like $5. Okay. So we Uber to the physical trainer or therapy or whatever to get our physical. Mm -hmm. He's not there. We go to where our classes are going to be. He's not there. We go to the uh, weight room, he's not there. We go to film, he's not there. We go to practice, he's not there. So then another one of our roommates tells me that he gets a call from him and that he flew back to Florida and he's just not doing the season mm. no more. So we just lost out on that person's portion of the rent and the down payment. And this is right before like COVID? This is, before, this is the first day. Oh. This is the first day uh, of practice. And then through next, piece of adversity. We have two roommates who are playing on the uh, basketball team, the uh -huh. brothers. One makes it, one doesn't make it. Right. They asked me about what they should do. I'm like, I don't know if I would stay if, um, if I didn't make the team. Right. They end up moving out. Didn't know that my advice was going to lead them <laughs> right. to move out. Right. Now we're missing two roommates again. Right. You know what I mean? So then there's another situation where my savings are dwindling. My other roommate's right. savings are dwindling. We still haven't found jobs because the job market in San Diego is terrible. Right. And then um, we're going to school, we're going to classes and everything like that. We're still getting adjusted to that. Uh, I go to pay the rent one day. I lose the check for the rent. And that was like a check of all of our money. And then we all called our mom, sister, brother, uncles, yes. cousins. So that was their money too for $1,500. Imagine being 19 and you lose $1,500, like cash, right. that was compiled by like six people. Right. So then I had to figure out how to get that rent back in like 10 days, right? So I'm not going to school no more, like right. for that period of time, I wow. have to get the money because I'm not trying to have everyone homeless right. on my account. Right, right. You know, so there's all of that struggle that I'm going through, our team's losing and everything like that. I end up tearing my hamstring, um, mm. like maybe second week of practice. And I still have a positive outlook, but right. then we hit, so then I 
winter break hits, I go back home. My plan was, hey, I can make a good amount of money. I'm gonna save some of that. And then now that I've seen what can be thrown at me, right. I'm gonna bob and weave and move accordingly. Right. Then COVID hits and then we have this wow. global pandemic. Wow. And then, you know, year passes and I go from 20 to 21 to 22. Right. You know what I mean? Still chasing a scholarship. Still, mm. I don't really have any film because I only played right. a couple games and my hamstring was torn. Yes, yeah, so you don't so, have proper treatment and yeah. care, rehab. So then right. Three years basically passed, including that first year that I played where I didn't really make any progress towards getting towards my goal. You know what I mean? So then it was time to really like, once the season was coming up and everything like that, like, it was like shit or get off the pot. Like, what are you gonna do? Like, mm. I'm gonna be like 25, 26, still pursuing this, you know what I mean? And then restarting, or I had already been working for a little bit. I'm like, do I take what I have now and then I build upon it? Right. And then I had to really think about how passionate I was about football. You know what I mean? Right. Do I care about this enough to, to make the sacrifices necessary to do, to, yes. to achieve in this space, yes. you know what I mean? Yes. Or am I just gonna be an adult and you know start adulting, you know? So then it was. Was that a hard decision for Oh, you? for sure, because like I made a mental commitment in my mind and deciding not to do it was like essentially failing. Mm. You know what I mean? Giving up on something that I committed to do. So that, that it was my ass a little bit, like that, right. making that decision for sure. Do you feel like you've always had a healthy relationship with your sport, like your identity not being in it? Or do you um, feel like? Yes and no. I think football was like the first thing I got passionate about and it helped me become passionate for sports. But then another big thing is like, you start thinking is like, a lot of people I meet, including myself, like don't ever find that passion for anything else, mm -hmm. right? And then, you leave the sport and then you kind of feel lost because like, what can I do to fill that void? You know, mm. it's like even as an adult, you never really see anyone putting. I was putting easy like 60, right. 70 hours a week. Easy. You know, I'm working out yeah. five o'clock in the morning. I'm going to. We have a weight room class just for the football players. Then after that, I'm getting extra workout in with like some of the better players. Facts. And then I'm going with one of my trainers, uh, and we're going and doing blah 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 blah. So I'm working nine to 12 times a week just on this one particular crap. Mm -hmm. And that's all I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not going to parties, I'm not talking to certain right, people because right, of that. Right, right, right. You know what I mean? Like, Consistent sacrifices. Yeah, towards mm -hmm. this specific, like, wow. single-minded goal. Right. Like, a lot of people don't end up translating that. So once that's gone, like, uh, you got to be wary about how you're going to fill that void yes. and how you're going to transition. That's so good. I love that you said that. I love that you said that because like either you can try to find something else and steward some other gifts or you can just literally drown yeah. in the what ifs. Yeah. Bro, the what ifs. Yeah, I could have just Oh, beat you up. This. Yes. Yeah. If yeah. my coach would have did this, if yeah. I would have went here, if I would have had that. If I would have had a better coach, if I would have yes. been in this situation. If, if I, I would have like, got noticed yeah. earlier. You like, know what I mean? If I would have had this trainer, if I would have went to this high school or this blah, 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 blah. For something that you'll never be able to change. Yes, it's torture. Or you'll still see people still talking 29, 28, still talking about you know what they was doing in high school, which is I always found super odd. Right. You know, like we're whole adults right now. Right. And, still and they're like, remember when I? Right, right, you know, right. Which it makes sense on certain occasions, but not everywhere. Not everywhere. <laughs> not, not everywhere you go. Not first. Right. Thing that comes out your mouth. Like that's not yeah. what people know you for. So some people still don't have an identity outside of wow. the school. Wow, that's so true. That's so true. So, what would you give student athletes taking this JUCO route? What advice would you tell them to help them succeed? You definitely got to be tougher than the times, all right? So you're going to encounter a whole bunch of adversity. A lot of stuff you're going to be seeing is not going to make sense. Mm. Um, you're probably going to be broke, you know what I mean? So you definitely got to be tougher and be able to overcome all of that and just know why you have a strong why. That's you know, good. Like if you're playing a sport because you know, you like the attention, and maybe mm. that's strong enough for you. Maybe you're just like a crazy narcissist. You know? Right, and right, that, right. That alone can fuel you. Right. But um, you just gotta find a strong enough reason as to why you're going. Maybe like you really 
are you know capable of going to the NFL or getting paid mm. for your sport or whatever it is, and that's one of your only options or something like that. Like then that makes sense, you know what I mean? Or maybe like you're really passionate about it or whatever. Just find out why you're doing what you're doing instead of just going through the motions and you should be able to come out on top. I would say that's the most important skill. Right. You know what I mean? No, just, yeah. just knowing why you're there and acting on that knowledge and right. executing. Yeah, well, that's good. That's so good. Do you have anything else do you want to say? Mm -hmm. No, I think that was a good skill. Right. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Yeah. You definitely gave a lot of tea and like, I loved everything you said. I loved everything you said. Being able to make that transition is super huge. Even yeah. if you don't get your dream, like oh, what are sure. you gonna do yeah. after? Because that's not all you, who you are. Yes. You're more than just the sport that you're playing. It should yes. be an extension of the type of person you are. Right, that's good. That's good. Well, all right, y'all. That's it for this pod. I hope you guys got some out of it. I'm pretty sure you did. And I'll see you next time. I'm sweating. It's hot. I was looking at the time. It says 420.